بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس نو وی ول ڈسکس دی ڈفرینٹ پارٹس آف دی تھلمن سیفلون یو نو دیٹ وی کلاسیفائی دی فور برین ان ٹو ڈفرینٹ پارٹس فور برین آر پروزن سیفلون اٹ واز کمپرائزنگ آف ٹیلن سیفلون رائن سیفلون Telencephalon, Rhinencephalon, and Diencephalon. We finished with the Telencephalon. We discussed the Rhinencephalon. Now our next topic is Diencephalon. And you know Diencephalon further comprise of Thalaman Cephalon and Hypothalamus Thalaman Cephalon further comprise of Epithalamus Thalamus and Metathalamus Now Epithalamus is further divided into Habinular Commissure and Habinular Nuclei in Epiphysis and posterior commissure epiphysis also known as pineal body So this was how we classified the four brain. Of these we finished with the telencephalon, then we finished with the rhinencephalon. Now diencephalon we will discuss now in detail. Now I have to complete this diagram here anterior is anterior commissure then there is lamina terminalis posteriorly We 
you know the pineal body, pineal stalk, then upper lamina of the pineal stalk and the lower lamina here in the upper lamina is habinular commissure. And in the lower lamina is posterior commissure. This is pineal body or epiphysis, pineal stalk, and the pineal stalk bifurcate into superior lamina and inferior lamina. In the superior lamina is habinular commissure, and on each side, habinular nuclei. Then, inferior lamina, when we trace it downward, there is another commissure known as the posterior commissure. So, you can see all these structures form the posterior wall of the third ventricle. <clears throat> and anterior wall of the third ventricle above is the anterior commissure, below that is lamina terminalis. And in front of the lamina terminus is paraterminal gyrus. Inferiorly is optic chiasma. Optic chiasma. Behind the optic chiasma is the tuber cinerium. Then median eminence, and below that is the pituitary stalk, to which pituitary gland is attached. And posterior to the tuber cinerium, there are two bodies known as the mammillary bodies, one lateral and one medial. And still behind the mammillary body is the longitudinal section through the midbrain, traversed by cerebral aqueduct. And you know, this upper part of the tegmentum of the midbrain is subthalamic tegmental region. So, anterior commissure, lamina terminalis, optic chiasma, tuber, cinerium, infundibulum, or pituitary stalk, pituitary gland, mammillary bodies, one right, one left, then this is the subthalamic tegmental region of midbrain. And above, you know, is the phonix. And this is lateral wall of the third ventricle where there is an oblique sulcus called hypothalamic sulcus. Above and behind this sulcus is the thalamus. And below and in front is hypothalamus.
forming the lateral wall of the third ventricle. So this was just a revision of these important structures. In the last lecture, in the last lecture, we talk about the caudate nucleus, a C-shaped nucleus having head, body, tail, and its tail and is a maculite body. The head and body of the caudate nucleus turn around this X-shaped structure, which is called thalamus. And I told you that from a maculite body, some nerve fibers extend, which run around the tail of the caudate nucleus, known as stria terminalis. Now we will discuss all these one by one, starting with the uh, habenular commissure, epithalamus. Now we will talk about epithalamus comprising of habenular commissure and nuclei in the upper part of the posterior wall of the third ventricle. Then pineal stalk and pineal body attached to the posterior wall of the third ventricle. And in the inferior lamina, there is posterior commissure. So all these three parts, habenular nuclei and commissure, pineal body and posterior commissure are components of epithalamus. So habenular commissure, is here in the upper part of the posterior wall of the third ventricle. On each side, there are nuclei not shown in this diagram. Suppose this is right habenular nucleus and this is left habenular nucleus. These two nuclei, they are interconnected by a bundle of nerve fibers, commissural fibers, like this. So suppose this is right habenular nucleus, this is left habenular nucleus, and here in the middle line, these are known as the habenular which interconnect the right and left heavy neural nuclei. So this heavy neural commissure, it is embedded in the upper part of the posterior wall of the third ventricle. Then by a pineal stalk, pineal body is attached to the uh, posterior wall of the third ventricle. Pineal body is a neuroendocrine gland which is attached to the posterior aspect of the brain. Apart from the uh, hypophysis, which is the pituitary gland, attached to the basal surface of the brain. Now the structure of the pineal body that we will discuss uh, in histology, it is secrete melatonin and we will also talk about the function of melatonin. So this pineal body uh, epiphysis, this is part of the uh, of the uh, the forebrain uh, that is diencephalon. But one point I want to discuss with you about the pineal body. This pineal body uh, in advanced age, in old age, may be calcified. Now, for example, this is anteroposterior view of the X-ray of the skull. So, because the bones are calcified, therefore, the bones can be visualized in X-ray. So inside, you can't see the soft tissue, that is the uh, cerebrum. Now, for example, this is a cerebrum, which you can't see in the X-ray.
So this is supposed posterior view. This is skull. And in the cranial cavity is the brain, which is not visualized in plain X-ray. So you can see that the pineal body is attached to the middle of the posterior wall of the third ventricle. So here will be the location in the midline. Location of the pineal body. But you cannot see the pineal body in plain X-ray. But you will be able to see opacity when the pineal body is calcified. Then you can see an opacity seen in the middle line. Opacity indicating calcified pineal body. It is in the middle line. But uh, if there is some space occupying lesion in the cranial cavity, which may be tumor, tumor of the meninges, may be accumulation of blood, may be accum accumulation of any other fluid or pus, etc. Naturally, it will compress the brain to one side. Now, for example, this is brain inside. And here is some space occupying lesion, as I told you, maybe tumor, maybe hematoma, accumulation of blood. Naturally, it will compress the brain to one side. Suppose this is the right side and this is the left side. So when the brain is pushed to this side, naturally the calcified pineal body will also be pushed to one side. So it will change its location from midline. It will, this opacity will be seen on the right side of plain X-ray. So this is normal, but uh, in this case, when the pineal body is calcified and the brain is pushed to one side by any pathological condition, naturally this opacity will be shifted to this side or this side, depending upon the location of this space occupying little. So in this case, when you take an X-ray, you will see an opacity, not in the middle line, but on one side. Opacity showing the calcified pineal body. So when the calcified pineal body is not in the middle line and it is shifted to one side, indicate, it indicates that there is some space occupying lesion inside, compressing the brain from one side to the other side, along with the pineal body. This was the importance of calcified pineal body, especially in advanced age. Next is the posterior commissure, which is again in the posterior wall of the uh, third ventricle uh, below the pineal body. And the posterior commissure is also comprising of commissural fibers. Again, suppose these are commissural fibers. They interconnect pretectal nuclei of the midbrain. This is suppose right pretectal nucleus. This is left pretectal nucleus. These nuclei are in the midbrain. So this is suppose right pretectal nucleus.
where in the midbrain and this is left pretectal nucleus and these fibers which interconnect the right and left pretectal nuclei of the midbrain because it is located in the lower part of the posterior wall of the third ventricle so these five bundle of fibers are known as the posterior commissure so as i told you that epithalamus comprises of the habenular commissure and habenular nucleus pineal body and posterior commissure these are parts of the epithalamus now i will draw a simple diagram to explain the posterior wall of the third ventricle Now suppose uh, this is a roof of the third ventricle. This is anterior wall of the third ventricle. This is floor of the third ventricle. This is cavity of the third ventricle. So this is roof, this is floor, and this is anterior wall of third ventricle. Now here is posterior wall. So posterior wall to the posterior wall pineal body is attached. From the pineal body, pineal stalk arises. which split into superior lamina and inferior lamina superior lamina run backwards then forwards and again far upwards this is superior lamina then inferior lamina run downwards pineal stalk pineal body then superior lamina and inferior lamina so above the pineal stalk here will be the habenular commissure and habenular nuclei and in the inferior lamina here is posterior commissure this is habenular commissure plus habenular nucleus one on each side and here in the inferior lamina is posterior commissure so all these three form the posterior wall of the third ventricle now this was about the detail about the posterior wall of the third ventricle we finished with the epithalamus and next to epithalamus is the thalamus
Now, you know that this is lateral wall of the third ventricle and lateral wall of the third ventricle is crossed by an oblique sulcus known as a hypothalamic sulcus. Above and behind this ophthalmic sulcus is the thalamus forming the upper and posterior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle. Below and anterior to the hypothalamic sulcus is hypothalamus forming the lower and anterior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle. Now this is the location of the thalamus seen in the lateral wall of the third ventricle. Now we will discuss the external features of the thalamus. Now thalamus is a mass of gray matter. This is thalamus and a wide mass of gray matter. It has two ends. anterior end and then posterior end posterior end is also known as pulvinar mass of gray matter egg shape having anterior end which is blunt and posterior end which is broad for example like egg having the having two ends this end it is a blunt anterior end and this is broader posterior end and this posterior end is also known as the pulvinar now on the inferior surface of the pulvinar there are two rounded bodies You can see here on the uh, inferior surface of the pulvinar, there are two rounded bodies. One is known as the lateral geniculate body. And the other one is known as the medial geniculate body. And you know both this lateral and medial geniculate body is collectively known as the metathalamus. Metathalamus is the name given to both lateral and medial genicular body. And where they are located, they are uh, located on the inferior surface of the posterior end of the thalamus.
and this posterior end of the thalamus is known as pulvinar. So this is lateral geniculate body and this is medial geniculate body. Now the thalamus as I told you is wide in shape. It has no definite borders but still because we have to discuss its relations we have to describe its superior surface, inferior surface, lateral surface and medial surface. Now you can see superior view is the superior surface, inferior view is the inferior surface, medial view is the medial surface and lateral view is the lateral surface but these surfaces are not separated from each other by definite borders because it is x-shaped but for descriptive purposes we will dis we'll describe these surfaces now for example i will mark the medial surface by a red marker this is the medial surface and I'll mark the lateral surface by black marker. This is suppose lateral surface marked by black marker and opposite it to it this is the medial surface marked by red marker now these two thalami are like this you can see this is right thalamus this is left thalamus the cavity in between the right and left thalami and also hypothalamus is the cavity of third ventricle so here will be the third ventricle so third ventricle is the middle so this is the medial surface of this thalamus right thalamus and this is the medial surface of the left thalamus similarly this is lateral surface of the right thalamus this is lateral surface of the left thalamus and this upper view this is superior surface of right and left thalami and below these are the inferior surfaces of right and left thalami so in this way we will describe the relations of these different surfaces of the um, thalamus and these surfaces are not separated from each other by definite border because the thalamus is x-shaped now I will draw again the coronal section of the brain dividing into anterior half and posterior half so that we will be able to see the diencephalon, thalamus and hypothalamus and especially we will concentrate on describing the different relations of the thalamus.
but because this is coral section and you, you are looking to the inside, therefore we will draw the several cortex, the gray matter outside, following the gyra and sulci of right and left cerebral hemispheres. This is cerebral cortex, gray matter outside, and inside is the white matter. Now, because this section is at the level of midbrain, so you can see longitudinal section through the midbrain. Then this section will also cut the corpus callosum. A section through the corpus callosum. Now, this is right cerebral hemisphere, this is left cerebral hemisphere, and this is the outer surface of the corpus callosum, this is the lower or inner surface of the corpus callosum. Now, from the middle of the lower surface of the corpus callosum, I told you a double membrane extends downwards known as the septum pellucidum and to the lower part of septum pellucidum fornix is attached So here you can see this is upper surface of the carpus callosum. This is a longitudinal fissure. Can you see a layer of gray matter cover the middle of the upper surface of the carpus callosum? This gray matter which covers the upper surface of the carpus callosum in the floor of longitudinal fissure and this gray matter is continuous with the cerebral cortex of right and left cerebral hemisphere. This gray matter has a special name, Indusium grisium. This is gray matter over the surface of the carpus callosum in the middle line, in the floor of longitudinal fissure. So this is corpus callosum. This is septum pellucidum. Now this is fornix. Now embedded in the white matter of right and left cerebral hemisphere, there is diencephalon. That is thalamus and hypothalamus.
This is right thalamus. Here is left thalamus embedded in the white matter of each cerebral hemisphere. Now, in this uh, section, below the thalamus is hypothalamus. So you can see this is thalamus. And this is hypothalamus. Both collectively form the diencephalon. I explained before that it is not like this that the thalamus is just above the hypothalamus. No, I told you that thalamus is above and behind, hypothalamus is below and in front. No, because of coronal section, because both thalamus and hypothalamus are in section, they appear as thalamus is above and hypothalamus is below. This is white matter of the cerebrum. Right cerebral hemisphere. And left cerebral hemisphere. This is a longitudinal section through the midbrain traversed by cerebral aqueduct. Now you can see this is septum pellucidum. The septum pellucidum is the partition between right lateral ventricle and left lateral ventricle. And then between the right diencephalon and left diencephalon on each side, fornix in choroid plexus is here, I have not shown above, and midbrain, and apart from midbrain, these other structures, optic chasma, tubers on here, mammary body, tegmenary membrane, uh, forming the floor. So right lateral ventricle, left lateral ventricle, and this is third ventricle. Now, all these ventricles, you know, are filled with the cerebrospinal fluid, but uh, there is epithelial lining which line these ventricles. This is the epithelium which line the cavities of the lateral ventricle, third ventricle, and of course, the cerebral aqueduct. Now, 
what is this lining? This is the epithelial lining. And the epithelial lining of the ventricles and canals is known as ependyma. What is the ependyma? Historically, it is simple cuboidal epithelium. And this is third ventricle and right to left lateral ventricles. Inside cerebrospinal fruit, but the inner lining is the ependyma. You know, all the body surfaces, whether these are external body surfaces or internal, they are always covered or lined by the epithelium. For example, the after our outer body surface, is covered by epidermis, which is stratified squamous carnizing epithelium. Therefore, our body surface is, is covered by epithelium, epidermis, which is part of the skin. And the lumina of various tubular organs, for example, elementary canal in line by epithelium, uh, the respiratory uh, passages lined by epithelium, urogenital passages lined by epithelium, that epithelium was the mucosa. So whether it is outer surface of the body or inner surface, as per rule, they are covered and lined by epithelium. So here, because you can see the, this is the inner surface of the uh, brain, the ventricles, lateral ventricle, third ventricle, sable aqueduct, fourth ventricle, central canal of middle obligator, spinal cord, are aligned by epithelium known as the ependema. So here again you can see ependema. Now our topic is what are the relations of different surfaces of the thalamus. I told you thalamus has superior surface, inferior surface. This is suppose lateral surface, on the other side is medial surface. Now uh, in this diagram, can you see this is superior surface of the thalamus, this is medial surface of the thalamus, this is inferior surface, and this is a lateral surface. So superior, medial, inferior, and lateral surfaces. Of course, there are no definite borders which separate these surfaces. So first of all, now we will discuss what are the relations of the superior surface of the thalamus. Now, can you see this is superior surface of the thalamus? So over the superior surface of the thalamus, there is caudate nucleus. And body of the caudate nucleus, depending upon level of the section. Now superior surface of thalamus. Number one, caudate nucleus. Number two, stria terminalis. And number three, thalamostriate vein. These are the relations of the superior surface of the thalamus. So you can see here on the superior surface of the thalamus, this is head of the caudate nucleus. If the section is at some other level, then body of the caudate nucleus will be here. Then there is a vein called thalamus triate vein. Thalamus triate vein. Now here you can see in this diagram, this is thalamus. In the neighborhood of thalamus lie the caudate nucleus, which comprise of head, body, and tail, 
is the tail end of the caudate nucleus is a maglite body. Can you see part of the caudate nucleus are close to the tail end, for example, head and body, and then gradually the tail moves away from it. Then I told you that from the amygdaloid body, a number of nerve fibers arise which run along the uh, outer surface of the tail of the caudate nucleus and then leave the caudate nucleus, uh, uh, connect with the hypothalamus and other structures. So here because it, there is thalamus, so you close the thalamus, this is thalamus suppose, and close the thalamus is uh, these striatum annulus, nerve fibers, and a vein, thalamostriate vein. So caudate nucleus, head and body, then striatum annulus and thalamostriate vein. So here on the upper surface of the thalamus, these structures are related. Caudate nucleus, close to it, thala, the uh, thalamostriate vein and then the stria terminalis. In the right diagram you have seen it. So can you see the, the ependyma which line the lateral ventricle cover all these structures. So all these structures, caudate nucleus, thalamostriate vein, stria terminalis is separated from CSF in the lateral ventricle by ependyma. So these were relations of the superior surface of the thalamus. I will again repeat, on the superior surface of the thalamus are uh, caudate nucleus, then stria terminalis, then thalamostriate vein, still covered by ependyma, which intervene between these structures and lateral ventricle. Now, can you see lateral ventricle? This is the roof of the lateral ventricle formed by carpus callosum. This is the medial wall of the lateral ventricle formed by septum pellucidum. And this is inferior wall of the lateral ventricle. All these walls are lined by ependyma and filled with CSF. So can you see the upper surface of the thalamus also take part in the formation of floor of the lateral ventricle. Floor of the lateral ventricle. It is forming floor. Thalamus superior surface from floor from floor of the uh, lateral ventricle not third ventricle lateral ventricle So upper surface of the thalamus, it form part of the floor of the lateral ventricle. It is covered by ependyma, but between the ependyma and superior cerebral thalamus, some structure intervene. That is the caudate nucleus, body and head. Then along near the caudate nucleus, stria terminalis and a vein called thalamus vein. These are relations of the superior surface of the thalamus. Now, next, medial surface of the thalamus. Medial surface. Now, can you see this is cavity of the third ventricle? This is right lateral wall of the third ventricle. This is left lateral wall. And these right and left lateral wall are also lined by ependyma, and the third ventricle is filled with the cerebrospinal fluid. So, can you see this is medial surface of the thalamus? So, it means the medial surface of the thalamus is forming part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle. Now, question arises which part, upper and posterior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle? Below and in front, the lateral wall is formed by hypothalamus. So, the upper and posterior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle is formed by medial surface of the thalamus. And can you see it is also covered by ependyma, which separated from the uh, cerebrospinal fluid. 
So the medial surface from the postro superior, postro superior part of lateral wall of third ventricle of brain. Of course, lined by ependyma. <clears throat> now, in some brains, what happens? The right and left thalami are interconnected by a thin bar of gray matter. Now, I will draw it here, for example, like this. A thin bar of gray matter, it interconnects the uh, two thalami. And this bar of gray matter, it traverses the cavity of the third ventricle. This is known as the interthalamic adhesion. This bar is known as the inter thalamic adhesion. Now the diagram will confuse you. Uh, as you can see, there is a partition which uh, divides the third ventricle into upper part and lower part. No, it is not like this. It is like this. For example, this is right thalamus, this is left thalamus, and between right and left thalamus, this is third ventricle. So there is a small bar of gray matter which interconnect the right and left thalamus with each other. And what is this? Around it is the cavity of the third ventricle. Thus, this diagram may confuse you that the third ventricle cavity is divided into upper part and lower part. No, it is not like this. Around this is present. Uh, the cavity of the third ventricle is yes, this. This adhesion between the two thalami is known as the interthalamic mm, adhesion. So, I explained it, now I want to rub it. This was about the interthalamic mm, adhesion. So, we finished with the relations of the medial surface of the thalamus. That is, it is forming the posto superior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle. It is covered by ependyma. And here it is cerebrospinal fluid. So this was superior surface, this is medial surface. Now come to the lateral surface of the thalamus. This is lateral surface and this is white matter of this right cerebral hemisphere. Same is here. Now what is here? What are the relations of the lateral surface of the thalamus? Now here, just uh, lateral to the thalamus, this is thalamus, in the white matter, there is an inverted V-shaped bundle of nerve fibers, known as the internal capsule. This is surrounding white matter and this is internal capsule. A V-shaped bundle of nerve fibers. The ascending and descending tracks. This is called internal capsule.
Do not confuse with connective capsule which cover different viscera. It is a bundle of nerve fibers <coughs> which is known as the internal capsule. Now this internal capsule has different uh, parts. This is a posterior limb of internal capsule. On it of internal capsule. This is anterior limb. Of internal capsule. And in the center, this band is known as genu. Now, outside it in the concavity lie the lens shaped nucleus known as the lentiform nucleus. Just like biconvex lens. Lentiform nucleus. Now you can see this is the lateral surface of the thalamus and this is posterior limb. So can you see lateral surface of the thalamus is related to the posterior limb of the internal capsule. So lateral surface of thalamus it is related to the posterior limb of internal capsule. This was the relation of lateral surface of the thalamus. On this side also same anterior limb, geno and then posterior limb of the internal capsule. And lentiform nucleus here. So lateral relations of the thalamus is the posterior limb of the internal capsule, not anterior limb. In other words, you can say that the lateral surface of the thalamus is separated from lentiform nucleus by posterior limb of the internal capsule, which is embedded in the white matter of the cerebral vessel. Now come to the inferior surface of the thalamus. What are the relations of the inferior surface? Inferior surface. Now, inferior surface of the thalamus this is thalamus posterior superiorly and to inferior is hypothalamus there is oblique sulcus I told you the hypothalamic sulcus so can you see this region this is the anterior end of the thalamus this one uh, anterior blunt end and pulvinar posterior end is on this side. Clear? So, this is the thalamus, this is the anterior end, and this is hypothalamic sulcus. Now, from this uh, anterior end, this hole is the inferior surface of the thalamus. That is, from this uh, blunt anterior end, to the posterior end, this is inferior surface of the thalamus. And in the region of pulvinar and inferior surface, there is a metathalamus comprising of lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body. So from here up to here, this is the inferior surface of the thalamus. In section, suppose the section is passing through 
passing at this level. In this section, can you see thalamus as above, hypothalamus is below, but the other inferior surface relations uh, cannot be explained. So in this section, you, you can see thalamus appear above, hypothalamus below. It do not mean that below the thalamus, there is only hypothalamus. Now, can you see here? This is inferior surface of the thalamus. So what are the inferior relations? Hypothalamus, then the subthalamic tegmental region of the midbrain. These are inferior relations of the thalamus. So, what are in inferior relations? Number one, hypothalamus. And then the subthalamic. Tegmental region of midbrain. Of midbrain, mesencephalon. Now I will give, I will again briefly describe relations of different surfaces of the thalamus which can be explained in this diagram very easily, along with this diagram also. So, superior surface, middle surface, inferior surface, lateral surface of the thalamus. Superior surface, can you see to superior surface, carpus callosum is attached. So, superior surface is related to the head and body of the cardiac nucleus. Close to it is a vein called thalamostriate vein. And close to it, there are a bundle of nerve fibers known as the stria terminalis. These are covered by ependyma, which separated from CSF in the lateral ventricle. So these are superior relations of the thalamus. Medial relation, can you see the medial surface of the thalamus from the posterior superior part of the lateral wall of the third ventricle and is covered by the uh, ependyma. So you can see this is third ventricle medial surface. Then lateral surface is directed towards the white matter of cerebral hemisphere on, inside, on each side. So what are the immediate relations of the lateral surface of the thalamus? That is posterior limb of the internal capsule. And the posterior limb of the internal capsule separate the lateral surface of thalamus from a biconvex lens shaped nucleus which belong to basal ganglion known as the lentiform nucleus. Inferior surface, in this diagram, it will misguide that inferior surface is only related to the hypothalamus inferior. You know, this diagram explain the inferior relations of the uh, thalamus. That is, anteroinferiorly is the hypothalamus and then posteriorly is the tegmental region of the midbrain, upper part which is known as the subthalamic tegmental region of the midbrain. As I told you before, the portion of the midbrain behind the cerebral aqueduct, this is known as tegmentum of the uh, midbrain. So these were different relations of the uh, thalamus. Now I told you that on the inferior surface of the pulvinar of the thalamus, there are two bodies, collectively known as the metal genital body. Lateral, the laterally is the lateral genital body and middle is the medial genital body. These are continuous with the superior and inferior calculi of the midbrain. Now, for that, I will draw another diagram which will help you to understand. Now, to explain the uh, connection of the lateral and medial genital body with the calculi of the midbrain. I will try to explain it on another diagram. Now, this is white shape mass of gray matter known as the thalamus. And 
And I told you that it's uh, posterior and is known as the palmina, which is broader. Now below thalamus, this is lateral view of the midbrain. Lateral view of the midbrain. Now I told you on the inferior surface of the pulvinar, there are two rounded elevations. One is known as the lateral geniculate body. And the other one is medially located, but I will show you here in this diagram, medial geniculate body. This is pulvinar, of course. Now, on the posterior surface of the midbrain, this elevation, this is known as superior calliculus. Superior calliculus and below that is inferior calliculus. We will discuss these in detail when we will deal with the actual features of the midbrain. Now this is a lateral view, so there is a pair of superior calliculi. In lateral view, I have drawn only one calliculus. And this is inferior calliculus of one side. Now this is lateral surface of the midbrain. lateral surface or lateral view of the midbrain. Now, this is a medial genicul lateral geniculate body. And the inferior surface of the pulvinar of the uh, thalamus. And this is medial geniculate body. This is lateral geniculate and this is medial geniculate. Now on the lateral surface of the midbrain, there is a ridge extending from superior calliculus to the lateral geniculate body. Similarly, below it on the lateral surface of the midbrain, there is another ridge which extends between the medial geniculate body and inferior calculus. This uh, rounded ridge which connects the lateral geniculate body with the superior calculus of the bit of the midbrain traverses the upper part of the lateral surface of the midbrain. This is known as brachium of superior calliculus. Brachium of superior calliculus.
Why it's called brachium? You can see this is brachium, upper arm, and forearm anti brachium. And this uh, anterior aspect of the brachium is elongated and rounded because of biceps brachii muscle. So because this uh, also appears like this brachium of the upper limb, this is why it is known as the brachium of the superior clavicle, this one. And again, on the lateral surface of the midbrain, below the brachium of superior calculus, there is again a longitudinal ridge known as the brachium of inferior calculus. Brachium of inferior calculus. So in this way, you can see on the inferior surface of pelvinar of the thalamus, there is lateral geniculate body and medial geniculate body. So externally, the lateral and medial geniculate body appears to be connected with the superior calculus and inferior calculus of the midbrain. So the lateral geniculate body is connected to the superior calculus of the midbrain by brachium of the superior calculus. The medial genicular body of the thalamus is connected with the inferior calculus of the midbrain by another elongated structure which traverses the upper part of the lateral surface of the midbrain. This is called brachium of the inferior calculus. So externally it appears that the lateral genicular body is in structural continuity with the superior calculus and medial genicular body is in structural continuity with the inferior calculus. But when we will discuss the internal features, the uh, fibers are different. And we will later on explain uh, the actual connection of lateral and medial genicular body. Remember, the lateral genicular body is part of visual pathway while the medial geniculate body is part of auditory pathway, hearing pathway. So there is visual pathway and hearing pathway. Lateral genicular body belongs to visual pathway, while the medial genicular body of the thalamus belongs to the auditory pathway. So because there is some uh, structural continuity, I will also explain the connection of these, of the metathalamus with the superior inferior calculi of the Midbrain. So with this we finished with the uh, epithalamus in which we discussed the commissure, hybrid commissure and nuclei. Then we discussed the pineal body and its stock and its clinical importance. Then we talk about the posterior commissure. This was epithalamus. Next thalamus and we discuss the uh, features of the thalamus, external features, internal features we will discuss later on and effects of lesion and function etc. we will discuss later on. So we will be finished with the external features of the thalamus and also below the pulmonar of the thalamus is the metathalamus. So we also talk about the metathalamus that is medial genicular body and lateral genicular body. And next part of the dance of land is the hypothalamus. That will be the topic of our next uh, lecture. Thank you very much.